Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is take you through integrals that have this particular form. It looks a bit daunting at first, but I can assure you, once you get acquainted with the particular styles, it becomes very easy to integrate these type of integrals by sight or by inspection. Now, I've purposely color coded this so that you can see the various parts as the tutorial develops. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is just take you through the types of integrals that have this form. And then at the end, I'll show you how easy it is to integrate them. Now, one of the most common types that you're going to meet is where g of x is some function of x and we raise it to a power. So let's say, for instance, you had this particular function. Let's say g of x was 3x squared minus 7. And I raise this to some power. Let's say I raised it to the power 4. And then I notice that if g of x is the 3x squared minus 7, if I take the differential of 3x squared minus 7, with respect to x, that would be 6x. And if I notice that this was multiplied by 6x, let's just put it on the front because that would be the usual place for that to go. Then this has this form if we integrate it with respect to x. And what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate that further by just saying that if we take f of x to be x to the power 4 and we take g of x to be the 3x squared minus the 7, then can you see that if we combine the functions f and g of x, if we do f of g of x, then we've got f of whatever g of x was, which was 3x squared minus 7. And so wherever we see the x in f of x, we replace it now with 3x squared minus 7. So what we've got is all of 3x squared minus 7, and that is all raised to the power 4. And so there's our f of g of x here, OK? And then if we take g dash x, g prime x, the first differential of g of x, then differentiating that, you get 6x. And so, OK, it was on the end here, but it can appear also at the front here. And so this integral takes on this format. OK, let's take another example. Let's suppose g of x was, say, 4x cubed minus 1. And this is all raised to, say, the power minus 3. And noticing that g of x was 4x cubed minus 1, if I differentiate this with respect to x, I get 12x squared. And then if this is multiplied by 12x squared, and if this is integrated with respect to x, it has this form here. It's well worth noting, by the way, that this could have appeared, first of all, as 12x squared, all divided by 4x cubed minus 1, all to the power 3, integrated with respect to x. So not at first necessarily noticeable as a product. But by changing it into this form, it has this particular form here. And again, I'll quickly take you through why this works. f of x is x essentially raised to the power minus 3. So we've got x to the power minus 3, where we have g of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 1. So when we combine the two functions, f of g of x, we've got f of g of x, that's 4x cubed minus 1. And then 
if we substitute for x 4x cubed minus 1 in f of x, then you've got all of 4x cubed minus 1 to the power minus 3. And the first differential of g of x is 12x squared. And so hopefully you can see it has that form now. OK? Now in my next example, I want to take you through a trigonometric type which has similar form to this. Let's suppose we to have the trigonometric function sine of, say, an angle x. This is g of x. And just like in these examples here, I raise it to a power, let's say to the power 3. Well, you wouldn't normally see it written like this, but as sine cubed x. So what I'll do is I'll just remove what you see here and change it then to sine cubed x. And if it's to be an integral that takes on this form, I would expect to notice that it's multiplied by the differential of g of x, sine x in this case. And if you differentiate sine x with respect to x, you get cosine x. And this time, I'll stick this on the end here, cosine of x. And so what we have here, if we integrate it with respect to x, is an integral that takes on this form. And for this one, just to be quick, we've got f of x would be something cubed, x cubed in other words, where that something, g of x, is sine x. And by combining f of g of x, then we're going to get f of sine x. And clearly, we're replacing the x here with sine x, and we end up with it equaling sine of x all cubed, although we would write that with the 3 there. And clearly, if we were to differentiate g of x with respect to x, differentiating sine x gives us cosine of x. And so, another type to look out for. And here's an example where we've got multiple angles, the angle 3x instead of the angle x. You'll notice that g of x is the cosine of 3x. And f of x is x to the power 5. So that when you combine these two functions, f combined with g of x, then we get the cosine to the power 5 of 3x. And finally, the differential of g of x, the cosine of 3x, is given by minus 3 sine 3x. And that's written here at the front. I've taken the opportunity, as you can see, to take that constant out, minus 3, out in front of the integral. So check out that situation as it may happen. Now, there's another type you should look out for, exponential types, where we've got e raised to some function of x. Let's say, in this example, 7x squared. 7x squared would be my g of x. And if I differentiate g of x, the 7x squared, that would be 14x. So if I multiply this with 14x, let's say we put it at the front here, 14x. So we would have an integral that would take on that form, where f of x is e of x, g of x is 7x squared, and you can see that by combining the two functions, f and g of x, we get e of 7x squared, and the differential of g of x is 14x. And lastly, I've got this example, where f of x is still e to the power x, g of x is minus 4x cubed, and when you combine the functions f and g of x, you end up with e to the power minus 4x cubed. And if you differentiate g of x, you get minus 12x squared. And notice also that this integral could have been given as minus 12, for instance, times the integral of x squared 
all over e to the power 4x cubed. So just like this one up here, negative powers may come from fractions. Okay, so do check that out. Well, hopefully you can now recognize this type of form through these examples. What I want to show you next is how we go about integrating them. And it's based around integrating what we call f of x and then replacing the x with g of x. And so I'll demonstrate this through this first example here. Do you remember that we had f of x as x to the power 4 and g of x was 3x squared minus 7? So on this rule here, all we do is we integrate f of x. So integrating x to the power 4 would be a fifth x to the power 5. And so we'd write the fifth in, but instead of x to the power 5, we replace the x with g of x. So it's now all of 3x squared minus 7 all to the power 5 plus the constant of integration. So as you can see, very straightforward. And for this second one here, we see that g of x is x cubed minus 1 and f of x was x to the power minus 3. I'll just put that down again as a reminder. So when it comes to integrating this, integrate f of x, integral of x to the power minus 3 is going to be minus a half x to the power minus 2. So we've got minus a half. Instead of the x, we replace it with g of x. So that's going to be 4x cubed minus 1 all to the power minus 2 plus the constant then of integration. And obviously you could write this as minus 1 all over 2 lots of 4x cubed minus 1 all to squared. So as you can see, it's a fairly quick, easy method, providing you can spot this form. So with this next one here, you might in fact want to just pause the video and have a go at this yourself. But what would we have as f of x? What would we have as g of x? Well, we can see g of x is sine x and f of x is going to be x cubed. So with that, if we integrate f of x, integrating x cubed gives us a quarter x to the power 4. So we've got a quarter and then replace the x with g of x. So that is sine x all to the power 4. Or I'd write that as sine to the power 4 of x like that, plus the constant of integration c. For the next one, then what would we have for this? I'll do it this time without putting f of x and g of x down. f of x is going to be based on x to the power 5 and g of x is the cosine of 3x. So if we integrate x to the power 5, that's going to be 1 sixth of x to the power 6. And in place of x, then we're just going to write cosine of 3x all to the power 6. So I'll just write cos to the 6 there, 3x and then plus c. Now with this next one here, this exponential one, we had f of x was e to the power x. So if we've got f of x equals e to the power x, the integral of e to the power x is e to the power x. So we replace the x with g of x, 7x squared. So we end up with e to the power 7x squared plus the constant of integration c. Very straightforward that one. And again for this one f of x is e to the power x. And so integrating e to the power x is e to the power x. But x is replaced with g of x so that's going to be e to the power minus 4x cubed plus the constant of integration c. Now, I've shown you how this appears to work, but I haven't verified it. And what I'll do is I'll check this out 
with the first example. So we'll check with first example here. And in order to do this, all I'm going to do is let y equal this answer here, differentiate it, and hopefully we should get this answer here. So let's just border this off down here. And if I was to say y equals one fifth of 3x squared minus 7, all to the power 5. To differentiate this, like any of these, I would need to use the chain rule. In other words, using the chain rule, we've got dy by dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx. And what I'm going to do in this example is let t equal the 3x squared minus 7. Basically, the g of x, as it would be for any of these examples here. So for this, we've got where t equals 3x squared minus 7. And we've got y would equal, for this example, 1 fifth of t to the power 5. So when it comes to working out what dy by dx is, dy by dx is dy by dt, first of all. So if we differentiate this with respect to t, we're just going to end up with t to the power 4. Instead of writing t, though, I'm just going to write 3x squared minus 7, and that will now be to the power 4. And then we have to multiply it by dt by dx. Differentiating t with respect to x, which was our g of x, remember, in this example here, gives us the 6x. So essentially, I have got this result here. And so you can see it works. So I'll leave it up to you if you want to just verify that any of these differentiate via the chain rule to give you these integrals here, okay? So that is basically it. And in the next video, what I'll do is I'll give you a set of examples for yourself to try, okay?